Hey my dear friends, once again welcome back to the channel. I am Gaurav here and that's the 19th video of this series. So in today's video, we will work on the health bar system for our player and the enemy so that we can know that how much health is remaining. So let's get started. But before we begin, as I always say, if you're new in the channel, then please check out our previous videos first. Also subscribe to the channel and don't forget to hit that bell icon. It's absolutely free. So right now it's our project and there is no health bars, but we really need them in our game. Cause without health bars it's very hard or maybe it's impossible to know that how much health we are remaining, right? Now you know that any game where we wanna show damages, there will definitely be a health bar visible and these health bars can be of any shape or form in the game. So without wasting your time, let's start working on it. Cause this video is gonna be a bit longer than usual. And actually creating a health bars are very simple. So mostly there are two ways to create a health bar. First way is that to use Unity's built-in UI system um, where we create a health bar with the help of Unity's UI system. And the other way is that to create a health bar manually. And in the manual way, we create health bar from the scratch, uh, like everything including a C-sharp to handle health bar movement. So in our project, we will go with the Unity's built-in UI system to create a simple and easy health bar for our player and the enemy. Cause I wanna make everything simple as possible for you guys. And also using Unity's UI system for health bars, it's quite common actually. And now we are here in our project. So let's go ahead and create some UI element to create a simple and easy health bar for our player and the enemy. Okay, so first we have to create an empty game object and name it UI. And now reset it and then move all these UI related stuff in there so that our project doesn't look messy. Nice and tidy. Now let's create a canvas that will store our health bars and on the canvas scaler we will set UI scaler mode to scale with the screen size so that our health bar is always bigger with the size of the screen and doesn't run out of screen. And the reference resolution is gonna be 2400 by 1080 um, same as our game's resolution and match height to 1 and I'll do same for our crosshair canvas and now within the canvas we'll create an empty game object and I'll name it help boss and within that we'll create a help bar for our player and the enemy and up here in the rack transform we can see that different anchor points so i'm gonna hold all button and then click on the bottom right one so that it will perfectly fit with the canvas and now within the help bar we'll create another empty game object and it's gonna be player help bar then in the player help bar we'll create two ui images one for the background and then i'll duplicate it to create a fill bar and this fill bar will actually show us that how much health level is remaining so let's select both ui images and select rec tool by pressing t and then while holding alt button stretch them a bit longer now let's go back to the player health bar and try to increase its size but as you can see these images aren't resizing properly according to the parent game object so let's fix it stretch health bar like 550 or 600 yeah 600 looks good and then half its height to 50 then select both ground and fill bar and again let's go to the anchor presets here and then click on the bottom right corner preset while holding alt button now if we scale our health bar then we scale everything in it accordingly now let's change its color click on fill bar and i'll give it a green color but it's all up to you you can give it any color and then for the background i'll give it a black color and i'll make it bit transparent but as you see here, currently our background is invisible. So let's increase its size a little bit like um, negative 15. Yeah, negative 15 from each sides. And I'll add a little bit more transparency to make it a bit more prettier. Okay, I think everything looks fine. So now I'll anchor it to the top right corner. And in the rect presets, this time I will choose that preset by holding alt and then click on it and give it a little margin from the edges let's say um negative 350 on the x position and negative 50 or let's say negative 60 on the y position perfect then i'm gonna duplicate it to create a health bar for the enemy and i'll call it enemy health bar and then i'll anchor it to the top left corner and then i'll give it some space from the edges and also i'll give it a color like um purple and in the game it looks like this not bad 
So now I wanna do like whenever our player or the enemy will get damaged then the fill bar will reduce its scale something like that and we can add that kind of effect by just adding a slider component. So let's select both our health bars and add a slider component on them and here I'm gonna make it non interactable and set the transition to none and also navigation to none. And now finally we have to add their respective fill racks on them. So carefully add them player's fill bar to the player's rect and the enemy's fill bar to the enemy's fill rect. And yeah make sure not to do cross connection. <laughs> and now here you see there is two values minimum and maximum value. So I let minimum amount to zero cause we want our minimum health amount should be always zero. And then I would give them 100 for the max value cause we have given 100 maximum health points to our player and the enemy. Now we can adjust the slider value to go in between 0 to 100. Then I'll also set the slider value to the 100. And here you see how cool it looks, right? Now we can adjust health bar to go up and down just by adjusting that slider. But wait, I think player's health bar will start from the right to left. Yeah, that looks nice. So now it's time to create a logic which will gonna adjust the slider value according to the health. To do that, let's open the health script in the visual studio or visual code. And now here it's a nice and simple script. Just taking damage amount, decreasing health points and then destroy. Very simple isn't it? Now before we start modifying this script, we need to add a very important namespace for the UI related stuff. So here we will use unityengine.ui. This allows us to create a variable which is gonna store slider. So let's create a slider type variable, CLS field, private, slider and name it slider. Now let's create an update function and in it all we have to do is that slider value is equal to something. Something what? Well here we will pass the health points and that's it. It's really that simple. We just created a health bar system for our player and the enemy. However, we're gonna face some bugs in our game, but first let's save it and head back to the game and check it out. Now we have to add health bars to their respective owners. Then hit the play button and now let's go closer to the enemy to see what we got there. And for now it looks just fine. Now shoot 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 and our enemy just got destroyed. Awesome! Our enemy health bar working fine. But there is still an issue, you see that on the enemy's health bar, it's showing that there's still some health remaining. But our enemy just got destroyed. So what's happening here? Well to know that we have to take a look on the health script. So let's go on the health script. And here all the way down in the take damage function, you see that here we just destroying the game object instantly. So, so what's happening here is that whenever we destroy the game object, in this case it's our enemy, then the compiler doesn't get enough time to run update function to update the slider value. So that's why the enemy get destroyed. But the health bar is still showing that hey there is still some health remaining. But actually there is no health remaining. So to fix that issue we need some delay in order to destroy so that we'll get enough time to update health bar. And to do that we just need to give a time delay in the destroy function. But how? Well destroy takes two parameters. First one is a object which we wanna destroy and the second one is the time. So here we can give a time to delay before destroying object. But if you wanna know more about destroy function then I'll give unity documentation link in the description or on the card. So here I'll give it 5 seconds and I think 5 seconds are enough to update health bar but I'm sure it's gonna give us very weird results. Okay so let's save it and hop back to the unity. Wait for a second and let it compile and hit the play button. Now let's approach to the enemy. And shoot shoot shoot. Now you saw that our health bar was just got empty. But this time the enemy was keep following and firing to us like a zombie. And then after 5 seconds the enemy got destroyed. Okay that's so weird. Let's fix it. Hop back to the health script and here. And the take damage function where we are saying that destroy the enemy after 5 seconds. But we also don't want that our enemy keep falling and shooting projectile to the player. 
So we want that whenever our enemy's health got empty, then our enemy should stop moving and shooting and then after 5 seconds our enemy should be destroyed. So to do that first we have to look at the enemy AI script and here you see where we are checking player's position. So I want our enemy AI script will stop checking player's position when enemy's health is zero. Ok so do that, here we will create a simple boolean type variable and it's gonna be public so that we can access that variable from the health script. So public bool and I'll name it is enemy died and by default I'll set it to false and we'll use that variable here in that if statement. So whenever our enemy health got zero then return. So let's edit by using our operator which is double pipes and pass that variable here. But if you don't know about our operator then I'll give its link in the description or on the card. So if target is equal to null or its enemy died then simply return. Now again head back to the health script and here I'm gonna get enemy AI script. So I was already explained that about how to get other script dynamically. But if in case you forgot about it then I'll give its link in the description box or on the card. Ok now create a variable for enemy AI script private enemy AI and I'll name it enemy AI. And then in the start function we will get enemy AI component from the enemy game object. And then in the take damage function where we are destroying game object we will simply set is enemy died equal to true enemy ai dot is enemy died equal to true. Now again let's head back to the unity let it compile and then hit the play button. Now let's go closer to the enemy and shoot 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 and there we go. Now our enemy's health bar is empty and his movement and shooting also stopped. Looks perfect right? But now there is one more problem cropped up. Well look what's happening here when the enemy will destroy the player. Now you see that the health bar is empty but the player is still there and we can still control our player. But it's supposed to be destroyed isn't it? But instead of this we are getting that nasty null reference exception on the console tab. So let's stop playing the game and, and let's try to figure out what's going on here. Why we are getting that error. So let's hop back to the health script and here you see the compiler says there is a problem with this line. But why? Ok let's see what's going on here. Look what we are doing here right now is that if the health is less than 0 then we are setting is enemy die to true and then destroy. That line looks perfect from the enemy's point of view cause the enemy has enemy AI script on it. But if we look from the player's point of view then there is no enemy AI script on the player. So that's the reason why we are getting null reference exception from the player side. Cause when this condition becomes true then the compiler reads this line and says hey let's set is enemy die to true. But then the game gets confused and thinks that there is no enemy AI script on the player cause the game doesn't know that if it's an enemy or not. Currently this script only works from enemy's point of view. So let's fix that issue. And all we have to do is that to create the condition and then check whether it's an enemy or not. So if it's an enemy then do this but if not then do that. Now here we have to create an boolean type variable so that we can check if it's an enemy or not. So let's go all the way up and create a boolean type variable. Serialized field private bool and I'll name it is enemy. And then down here we will create a simple if statement where we will check if it's an enemy then execute this line of code means if it's an enemy and also life bar is empty then first stop moving and shooting and then destroy. Else if it's not an enemy then simply disable player's movement and shooting abilities and then destroy the player. So now to disable player's movement and its shooting abilities we will create a condition in the player's movement and the weapon script as we did with the enemy AI script and, and actually it's fairly simple that you can do it by yourself. So pause that video and accept that simple challenge and I'll meet you in a second. So once again welcome back. Hope you guys already completed that challenge. 
but if not then let's fix that issue together so let's move on the place movement script and here we'll create a public boolean type variable and i'll name it is player died same as we're done with the enemy and and then within the fix update we have to check if his player died or not but if yes then return so let's create a simple if statement and in it we will check if is enemy died equal to true then return and then in the weapon script we will do exactly same actually we can just copy and paste that line of code in the weapon script so if is player died equal to true then return um well i'm not setting it to true because by default booleans are true and now in the health script we will access both scripts now here i'll create a variable to store these scripts so private player movement and i'll name it player m and for the weapon script private weapon and i'll name it weapon and then we'll get these scripts from the player and then finally here we will set is player died equal to true for both scripts so that whenever our player got empty health bar then player's shooting and movement abilities should be disabled now I head back to the unity and yeah don't forget to check is enemy died to true only on enemy game object not for player okay otherwise it's not gonna work perfectly and it will give you errors so carefully check is enemy died to true only on enemy game object not for the player okay and hit the play button and let's go closer to the enemy and shoot 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 and enemy got destroyed it's so cool now let's take one more try but this time i'll let the enemy to destroy our player here you see the health bar is empty and i can't control my player anymore and after five seconds our player is destroyed and also there's no error on the console tab and everything is working fine so finally we are done with the health bar system and in the next video we will work on the visible damage effects like explosion or thunder and for now that's all in this video so till then keep learning keep practicing and i'll meet you in the further upcoming videos for now see ya later